very good evening friends meeting again in the session of philosophy and we are discussing regarding the specifically the chapter number 12 from the kent's philosophy in this chapter he tried to explain one concept that removal of the totality of the symptoms means removal of the disease in its whole extent and it is nothing but removal of the totality of the symptoms means removal of the cause at the same time so both things he tried to explain over there with this philosophy his philosophy related with the aphorism number 17 18 19 and 20 four aphorisms which he tried to explain over there and while this explaining in the last paragraph which with, with which we have finished was the aphorism 18 and where hanuman was confidently said that besides the totality of the symptoms there remains nothing in order to find it out a right remedy and to cure the patient so it is a an und he has used the one word and <coughs> it is an undeniably the things which we have to understand that besides the sum of all symptoms nothing is there in the case, individual case that will be the sole indication in order to find it out a right of remedy and to confirm the choice of remedy so see whenever we are dealing with any case don't go on the name of the case what is the pathology what is there that is not important what the patient presents this is too important to understand what exactly the patient present so whether patient presents with liver cirrhosis is not useful for you you must understand what is his complaint what what he presents to you whether he complain doctor there is severe pain in my abdomen whether it is on right side whether we explain doctor there is severe pain in abdomen and he indicates it with at the epigastric region diagnosis is liver cirrhosis or diagnosis is of liver pathology as explaining that pain in epigastrium and if you examine there is a left lobe of the liver is enlarged you can find it out with ascites lot of ascites which has already developed so if you go with the name then you there you get stuck but if you, if patient explain certain specific symptomatology with which he is presenting it is quite easy for you to find it out the remedy so very important thing in this is the to find it out the right remedy on the basis of totality of the symptoms and that is the sole indication in finding it out the remedy so every symptom every concept what the patient explains has a meaning and that's what he wants to focus so he explained all those things let us go ahead with the next paragraph what he says but it is not enough to consider the totality as a grand whole besides considering all symptoms collectively each individual symptom must be considered every symptom must be examined to see what relation it sustains to and what position it feels in that totality in order that we may know its value whether it is a common symptom whether it is a particular symptom or whether it is a peculiarly characteristic symptom this we shall consider later in the course so when you are dealing with the patient patient expresses a lot of symptomatology first you take into consideration all those things this is called as a portrait which you have created but out of that portrait you have to differentiate what is essential for you if there are certain common symptoms they are not at all useful for you so those are, those should be taken out if there are any particular symptoms unless and until they are characteristic they are not useful for you so you have to look towards symptoms what symptoms you have gathered and you have to analyze them and that's why after making a totality of the symptoms the next step is always analyzing the totality into two different types first important whether it is general symptom or a particular symptom if it is general then you have to divide whether it is mental general or physical general if it is mental general again you have to divide whether it is related with will and emotions whether it is related with intellect and understanding or whether it is related with the memory and if it is a particular symptom then again you have to divide it into two parts whether it's common or characteristic 
So this classification is very, very important because with the help of which you can find it out, the evaluation. Then you give the importance that this is the characteristic which should come first or this is the mental general which is related with the will and emotion that should come first. So this, this is what the next step is on the basis of which you can reach to the right remedy. So evaluation plays a very vital role. Analysis plays a very vital role so that you can understand the remedy or you can select the remedy on the basis of that. Then he explains about the aphorism 19, what he says. Now as diseases are nothing more than alterations in the state of health of the healthy individual, which expresses themselves by morbid signs and the cure is only possible by change of healthy condition of the state of health of the deceased individual. Cure is only possible by a change to the healthy condition of the state of health of the disease in you. It is very evident that medicines could never cure diseases if they didn't possess the power of altering man's state of health, which depends on the sensations and functions. Indeed, that their curative power must be owing solely to this power, the possessors of altering man's state of health. When you are dealing with homeopathy, you must know what is homeopathic medicine and to which medicine you call it as a homeopathic medicine. First important thing that the medicine which has the capacity to alter the human state of health at the level of sensations and functions, that medicine is the homeopathic medicine. So, if you have given that medicine to the patient, <coughs> uh, to the prover, and it has altered the state of health, produced the functional symptoms, some sensations, that medicine is called as a homeopathic medicine because when it has been given in potentized form, the human react, reacted to you. So, you have included in your Materia Medica one by one remedy. Hanuman started with Sinkonabar, but then he has added many more. And all those on the virtue of this, that he has provided it to the patient in the, specifically in the dynamic form. They, then he has written down what has happened in, with each and every patient, the whole symptomatology. And on the basis of that, he knows it has the capacity to alter the human state of health at the level of sensations and functions. Then, on the basis of law of similars, if you apply this remedy, which has already a capacity to alter human state of health, then that remedy will work as a remedy to the patient. So that medicine will work as a remedy. That, re that medicine will work as a remedy and cure that patient and bring that patient from the state of disease to the state of health. Because the disease has happened in the same plane, in the dynamic plane. And your medicine has the capacity to alter the human dynamics because it has been proved in the same manner. And when both of them matches each other, then you can give that remedy to the patient only on the basis of law of similars or nature's law of cure. And the artificial disease which is produced by your remedy is more stronger than the natural disease. And then that's why the nature's law of cure works. That is a weaker dynamic affection. That is the nature's natural law, natural disease will disappear completely. So only a weaker dynamic affection is permanently extinguished in the living organism by a stronger one, that is medicinal disease, if latter is very similar to former in its manifestation. So both of them, their manifestations are same, but their <clears throat> kind is different. That's why it has been written in bracket by Hanneman, while it's differing in kind. Kind means truth. One is natural, another is artificial. One mm, mm, kind is the natural disease. Another kind is because of your medicine. Medicine is the kind of it. But both of them present the same manifestation. Then this law is applicable. So this is, this is the way with which homeopathic remedies act. And they have the capacity to alter the human state of health at the same level as the natural disease happens to be. And that's why 
these drugs often cure the patient in such in such a manner. The philosophy behind this aphorism 19 he explained. The statement is that medicines must be capable of effecting changes in the economy or they cannot restore the order in the economy. So first important thing is that they should have a capacity to make a change in the human state of health, then and then they will cure the patient. If the medicine is too high to effect a disturbance in the irregularly governed economy, it will be too high to effect a cure in that economy. The potency must be consistent with the degree of susceptibility that calls for the medicine. So if you are choose belladonna for the patient on the basis of totality of the symptoms, but your potency should match what the patient's susceptibility is there, whether the patient will require 6, whether the patient will require 30 or 200 or 1M, it depends upon the susceptibility. You have to judge that and then you have to decide. So potency must be considered with the degree of susceptibility that calls for the medicine. This susceptibility includes a wide range of potency. So that from 30 to CM, there is seldom a miss in actual experience. It is seldom that the potency is too high, but that it has it is higher than the necessary, than is necessary is often the truth. For every patient, it varies. For someone, it might be it might require 6 or 30. For another patient, it might require 200. For another patient, it might require 50. Another, it might be CM. It varies because that individual susceptibility of that individual is different. And that's why you have to decide it on the susceptibility. No drugs can act curatively except by its ability to effect changes. And it is known that the drugs do effect changes by their provings. But in the proving, the drug has been increased in quantity or reduced in quality in accordance with the judgment of the program. Many times, the coarser substances effect few changes and sometimes none, whereas the higher substances make six. This is in accordance with the state of susceptibility. So he has explained over there, he has explained regarding the how the proving is done. When you do it in proving, it doesn't matter because you are proving the remedy. So sometimes you have to you have selected to prove the 30 potency and patient is not reacting. Then you might increase the 200 and then you watch for the getting the um, symptomatology. You are doing it for the purpose of knowing the material medica, knowing the, um, its manifestation. But this you cannot do in patient. There you should be very um, confident in judging the susceptibility of that injury. Then you have to understand whether patient will patient requires 30, whether patient requires 200. Higher the susceptibility, higher should be the potency, less repetition. I think I have given this rule to you many times. Higher the potency, higher should be the, uh, sorry, higher the susceptibility, higher should be the potency and minimum repetition. Lower the susceptibility, lower the potency, repetition till the susceptibility gets aroused. This formula, you keep it in your mind. This is too important formula. So if patient comes in acute state, doctor, severe sore throat, I cannot swallow, please do something. There is a fever and whole throat is congested and he's having headache, there is throbbing headache and he's in agony and he calls doctor, please, please give me something early. What is the susceptibility? Patient susceptibility is very high because of which he's presenting like that. He's not coming, doctor, my Please do something, my sore, I'm having very sore throat. Susceptibility is low. You have to judge on it, it on the patient's reaction, how the patient presents. So, if the patient has presented in such an acute state, the susceptibility is high, potency should be high. If you have selected belladonna, give it in one M. But don't repeat too much because patient is already highly susceptible. Your one stimulus, one or two doses are sufficient to make a change. There is no need of repetition. Repetition always causes, causes an omeritic aggravation in acute state. When susceptibility is high, there, is lot, there are a lot of chances of having high 
uh, homeopathic aggravation if you repeat the potency. So, first thing that in such cases, you should not repeat it too much. Higher the, higher the susceptibility, higher the potency, less the repetition. Lower the potency, now lower the susceptibility, lower the potency, repetition is needed till the susceptibility gets aroused. Okay? What he further says, some provers are susceptible to the higher who are not at all susceptible to the lower. There are patients who are not at least susceptible to a single drop of tincture of copia, but who are extremely susceptible to the higher potencies of copia. Such patients, however, are often made sick by large quantities of coffee. Lycopodium, in its crude form, has upon the most people no effect, but in higher potency is capable, it followed up continuously, mm, follow, it followed up continuously of affecting almost everyone. The effect that medicine have upon the sick in restoring the order can best be observed by inducing or inducing the effect upon the healthy individual, which we call proving. So this is the importance of proving. We know that in which remedy works in which potency and gives maximum symptoms. It also depends upon the medicines. So not only the susceptibility you have to judge, you have to judge which medicines you are going to give. If you are giving aconite, you must know the aconite phase. Aconite is very acute, belladonna is very acute, naxomica is very acute, chamomilla is very acute. So the susceptibility is very strong with these remedies, even in low potencies. Even they don't, you don't have to go for naxomica 10M, not needed. You don't have to go to belladonna 10M. Because belladonna, even in 200 potency, it works because the pace is very fast with belladonna. Aconite, the pace is very fast. So, here you have to understand which remedy you are proving. If you are giving barataka, very slow, very dull, it requires a repetition. That's why Boric, if you read, open the Boric's Matra Medica, barataka, the dose, he, he has written one sentence over there. Barata is slow in action, it bears repetition. That is the sentence made by him. What it means? It means that barata, if you are giving, but at the action is slow, you have to go on repeating till the action is aroused. So, every remedy when you are learning, you must have a knowledge what is its pace, how slow is it is in action, how fast is it is in action. If you understand that depth of the remedy, then you can utilize the remedy in a proper manner, in proper potencies. So this is what he is explaining here. The, he is writing down or explaining the question of potency dilemma when you are, he is explaining about the susceptibility. And all those things should be very clear in our mind so that we can utilize them properly. Then what he says, you might easily suppose by the way of modern firms bring their medicines before us that they have by a great effort of their will and by great meditation thought out what these drugs will do to the human family. For the purpose of ascertaining state of medicines at present time, I very often listen patiently to the drummer from some of the New, New York houses. He will speak in he will speak his piece, tell what this wonderful combination will do, how many diseases it will cure. And then I ask him how he finds this out. Oh, the doctor says so. He, here are the testimonials. But how do you they find it out? Who oh, they use them? So he is explaining that the, this is, this is, these are the states which are happening over the city. So the homeopathic proving and the allopathic proving are completely different. They are completely different. When you are thinking about the homeopathic proving, here you are giving the stimulus. Here you are not giving the material thing. Here you are giving a medicine which is just to stimulate the human vitality or vital energy and whatever comes out is a secondary reaction. 
and that's why you know all the subjective as well as objective symptoms of the patient in the probing. But when you deal it with the modern medicine, when you give the material doses to the patient, they never prove it on basically on the human being. They prove it on animals. And then they what what do they look, look for? They look for only for the thing which happens at the level of cells or tissues or organs. And they go on writing down what are the changes it has produced at the cellular level at the blood levels, at the plasma level, what it has made the change, and all those things, they write it down. And on the basis of that, they define this medicine or this molecule is useful for such and such thing. So, this, this proving never gives you a subjective symptoms as we get in homeopathy, as we get it in homeopathic proving. So data varies from the allopathic proving and homeopathic proving. We have ample data because we have subjective as well as objective symptoms in our record. But in allopathic proving, we have only objective things and which are visible at either at naked eye, either at microscope or either at the, some um, laboratory method. That is the only thing which they know. They have done it on animals. What he says further? But the drugs have not been proved and their use is not in accordance with what homeopath, what the homeopath knows the drugs will produce or cure. This is the problem with allopathic proving. When they prove the drugs, they prove it on animals and consider the human as an animal and utilize it. So there is always a fear in mind whether it, how the person will going to react. Then whatever the anything besides that happens in the human being, they write it as a side effect. Actually, it is not a side effect. It is the effect of the medicine. But it is besides those symptoms which are proved on animals, besides that this happens, then he labels it side effect. So this is, this is the question which arises in their mind before giving and actually applying that molecule. But when we prove it on human being, we know all things already prior to be applied the remedy. So we'll, we, we don't have a fear in utilizing our remedy because we know what, what things it will going to create. If you go into a friendly drugstore and talk to, with the druggist, you will find these medicines which have been concocted in the prescriptions of all the fashionable doctors in the neighborhood. In the six months from that time, if you go to the same store, you will you will not find one of those drugs in you. But a new set following visit of, of the traveling man who has come around to represent their wonderful properties. So what he is explaining? He is explaining that there are always new drugs comes out, old drugs are taken away. And this is the truth. When I started my practice in 32 years back, at that time, there was one, there, there was a chloramphenicol was the medicine which was used for typhoid. Tremendously, it was during 85, 84 to 90, this period, they were using first the chloramphenicol. Then after chloramphenicol, it has changed, then new molecule entered into the market, that is norfloxacin. Norfloxacin was used rampantly. Then they understood that it, it never produces so effect in entry. Then new molecule came, ciprofloxacin. Then there are there was o p fluxacin, then sparfloxacin, then o fluxacin, and many more came into the existence. And every time it has been changed. Whether these people who are doing the allopathic practice, they have studied those molecules. It was not there in syllabus. Then how do you how do they know? They know it only because because the representative comes from the company who tells them yes this is the molecule which we have you proved and brought into the market and then doctor utilizes it on the basis of what that fellow has taught to them. See how much risk you are taking. 
you don't know how exactly it will going to produce any change still you are using and if anything wrong happens this is called that side effect and if you open the memes or drug today book you will find there are very few indications and contraindications and the side effects it is a big maximum because because the indications are there only on the basis of cellular or pathological changes <clears throat> do not think that i refer entirely to the old school because a large percentage of this prescription is from the professor homeopath who is from professor homeopath and that is as much homeopathy as anything they do <clears throat> the majority of homeopaths do these things attempting to establish homeopathic practice upon allopathic foundation they try to become fashionable and change their prescription as the lady change their bonnets with the season <laughs> see what kent has said <clears throat> he has not criticized allopaths only he has criticized homeopaths who used to practice allopathy and they also used to do same thing they tries to change the medicine off and on and because of which there are problems in the system of medicine every time something new molecule is there in the practice and that ultimately presents that patient we have the remedies proved by hanemann and still we are using it in the same manner we don't have to change there is no question of resistance happen and there is always a question of resistance happens to the antibiotics given in allopathy so these things happens because these are the things which will going which are the realities and hanemann put uh, close uh, kent has tried to put it in front of you with this different aphorism so we have finished one more part of the this chapter tomorrow we will definitely finish this chapter and will next lecture will start with 13 chapter so that's all for today we'll finish over here and we'll continue tomorrow with the remaining part of this chapter so he is trying to impose on your mind what is there in homeopathy and what is there in allopathy what is the what are the concept which are utilized in homeopathy what are the concept which are in, utilized in allopathy what how the medicine works in allopathy how the medicine works in homeopathy all those things he is trying to explain you in detail so that you can understand the the come exactly the actions of the medicine so that's all for today we'll meet tomorrow at the same time any query is there we'll have a chat otherwise we'll finish and in the evening at 30 we'll continue with the nugs a big remedy polycrest we have already um, two days we are discussing but i think two more days or three more days might require to complete the nugs for me now So that's all for today thank you thanks a lot be there at 8:30